Dr. A.V. Eric, it's uh, how these uh, coup d'etat uh, will affect uh, not just uh, the external relationship that Africa has uh, with other partners, but looking at how uh, this will actually affect, especially uh, uh, Africa's integration plan. You know, uh, over the years, uh, there uh, people have been actually jubilating that the historic continent of Richard area has gone uh, uh, into uh, its practical form, and uh, people were eager to see its full implementation. But then, uh, with the latest uh, revolution across the African continent, touching mostly in the political sphere, there are many questions on how uh, uh, this will affect uh, the internal environment of the continent Africa, be it uh, the political, economic, social, and you can name the rest. Uh, uh, let's let's write, uh, continue with you, Mr. Arnold Dovely. You know, uh, when uh, Mr. Ellis was talking earlier on, he asked the question because he didn't share with uh, the uh, idea or maybe conform to military takeovers in a country without a clear agenda. Sir, I will want to direct his question to you because he actually asked, what next? What is the agenda? After the military takeover, how can a nation assure or ensure that there is a return to calm, stability, and normalcy? And if it's a civilian role, how can we bring in somebody that will work a role for the interest of the people? And while you're answering this question, the agenda, I also want to get your own perspective of the role of the international community, uh, actually the role they'll play in uh, supporting African countries in the uh, aftermath of uh, coup d'etat, particularly in the terms of uh, restoring stability and promoting democratic transitions. Yes, thank you, Clarice. Well, uh, to answer the first part of your question, I guess I can only echo what uh, Dr. Elijah was saying. Uh, of course, we would all like to assume that civilian uh, leadership is somewhat the most uh, presentable aspect of rule. But sometimes, and uh, history is uh, strong with uh, examples and precedents of uh, a great leaders, uh, particularly in Africa, issued from military ranks. Uh, whether it's uh, the late uh, Colonel Gaddafi, whether it's uh, a great independentist uh, such as Patrick Lumumba, Thomas Sankara, uh, it's just the issue that when it is about renegotiating the economic uh, re uh, distribution of the country's assets, obviously, uh, you know, this is where the uh, rubber meets the road. And uh, we've seen this times and times again with assassination attempt by the dozens, coup d'etat by the dozens. Um, one of my colleagues was mentioning the Abongo family who has been ruling uh, this country for 60 plus years. I mean, it is, uh, you know, the uh, perfect example of, uh, you know, the uh, the anointed, you know, France Afrique uh, representative. Uh, and in Ivory Coast, we saw that as soon as Laurent Gbagbo started somehow deviating from the agreed upon script, uh, he was immediately uh, moved away and sent even to uh, the Hague for uh, uh, some uh, international crimes. Uh, we actually, unsurprisingly, now see his successor, uh, Alassane Ouattara, who was a product of uh, U.S. universities, uh, who is now one of the leading voices calling for uh, a uh, ECOVAS uh, 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 sponsored or disguised intervention to re-establish President Bazoum in Niger. So let's, no, let's make no mistake about it. Uh, whether it's civilian or uh, military rule is a force issue. The issue is how to somewhat have a uh, new leadership which is strong enough, uh, bold enough, and committed to basically turn the tables around, not uh, trade for one uh, outside influencer for another one, but to reset basically all the agreements. And we saw in Mali that this has already taken place with a, uh, a rewriting of the Code of the Mines. So that the mining industry may actually end up being more beneficial to the people of Mali. So this is in 
incremental through incremental uh, steps and concrete steps such as this one that we will see the legitimacy of uh, eventually those new leaders they may uh, eventually slowly but surely once stability is uh, established in terms of uh, the economic redistribution uh, and don't forget also that those colonial powers are not going to give up uh, one of my colleagues mentioned how France immediately held the two conseils de défense in the wake of uh, the Gabon coup and the Niger coup. Those people are not going away. Their uh, uh, status and their ranks in the international pecking order depends on it. So you can expect more uh, proxy terrorist groups being uh, deployed in the Sahel uh, region, uh, trying to, what they did essentially in the Middle East, uh, create this kind of golem. Uh, like they did in Iraq with Daesh, and they will they will try to justify their presence. Let's not forget also about NATO, who is uh, now trying to build a base in Mauritania. So Africa is at the forefront of uh, any kind of attempt aimed at maintaining uh, the uh, not so uh, um, uh, balanced uh, economic redistribution accord. And uh, those those interests are going to fight two and nails to make sure that nothing changes. So it is, to me, the most important thing is for the, those new leadership, to the extent they are really all sharing this uh, approach, which is, you know, we're going to basically do tabula rasa of everything that we've seen so far. I would suggest that they uh, create uh, interpenetration and they coordinate intelligence, military uh, assets, so as to better, uh, confront what is most likely to be coming their way. Uh, this is, it's, they're going to have to kill in the egg any kind of attempt for those colonial powers to maintain their, their positions on, uh, in this region and on the continent at large.